welcome to this class on Plant Select Perennials. The instructor is Pat Hayward, the director of Plant Select. For additional information on these plants, refer to the Plant Select website at plantselect.org. Want to talk about Plant Select? It's this unique collaboration Denver Botanic Gardens, Colorado State University, and horticultural professionals throughout the region. The goal of Plant Select is to find, promote, and make available resilient, beautiful, durable plants for the Rocky Mountain region. The region we are looking at extends from Montana down to New Mexico, looking at region that is hotter, drier, has fluctuations in temperatures, and has higher elevations. What we look for when we choose plants are plants that have a long season of interest, that perform exceptionally well under low water, adaptable to a wide range of garden conditions because there's many different types of gardens in the region. Of course, resilient to our challenging climate. We want to make sure they're non-invasive and that we're looking for things that are unique that maybe you couldn't find anywhere else. All the plants that come through the Plant Select program are trialed at Denver Botanic Gardens and at Colorado State University to make sure they fulfill those requirements we're looking for. And Plant Select is this unique collaboration. The people that, the organizations that are part of the program, in our growing facilities, we have propagators all the way into Canada, across the United States. We have retail garden centers, wholesale members, mail order companies, seed sellers, and even landscape professionals choose to be part of this program. We're going to talk about some of the best performing perennials. Plant Select has 127 plants in the program. Many of them are perennials. So today is just going to talk about some of the very best, some of the most unique, ones that I think should really be considered for gardens. Perennials are plants that usually come back every year. We look for plants that are durable and hardy and do come back. Sometimes they don't, so, but we do say that they come back year after year as opposed to an annual that only blooms all summer but then dies at the end of the season. When you plan ahead, you can have perennials that will bloom all summer long, even in low water conditions. We look for ones that are very low care. This group we're going to talk about alphabetically by botanic name just because sometimes it's kind of confusing when we use common names. So the first one is Sunset Hyssop. And this is a group of what we call Agastaches or Agastaches. And the Agastaches are known for their low water needs and their late summer glory. They will bloom from July until frost. Fabulous hummingbird plants, all of them fabulous for bees and butterflies. Wonderful for a pollinating garden. This was one of the very first Agastaches that came through the program called Sunset. It's a native of New Mexico. It'll get about two to three feet tall, has this incredible root beer aroma to the foliage, and the foliage is a silvery blue, a very fine textured. So even in early summer, you'll have a mound of the foliage, and in late summer, these uh, bicolor purple and orange flowers will cover the plant for a month to two months. In combination with the soft colors like these yuccas, tree form yuccas, a beautiful combination of the silvery blues, southwestern look combination here, but very, very drought tolerant once established. Another agastache is Sonoran Sunset. This was a plant select introduction. It was chosen for its compact habit, for its super hardiness, and for its long blooming time. On the left is at the gardens at Kendrick Lake. And on the right is in a private garden. Look at the hummingbird. The hummingbird has this buffet of plants to go to. It's got the Sonoran Sunset, a uh, gastache in the front, and a native Cleome and a red yucca. Next we have Aquilegia. This is called Denver Gold. This was a selection of our native columbine, but it's the yellow form. And many times our, the Colorado native, the blue and white one, tends to be kind of short-lived. This one is super perennial. This will come back year after year after year, and it grows in a wide range of conditions. This is at Denver Botanic Gardens in shade. It's got a little bit of western light, but most of the day that's in shade under the pine tree. It is not as susceptible to the mildew that our, the blue and white one is. Here it is in full sun. Look how much more compact it is. The foliage is tighter. The blooms are much uh, more compact. So it's a very adaptable form of very perennial columbine called Denver Gold. 
And again, blue and yellow combinations are fabulous. This is Denver Gold growing with blue flax and a form of cat mint. Great early summer combination. Our native columbine is a blue and white form. This form was called Remembrance, and it's a particularly dark blue, almost a purple with the white. And this was selected to honor the victims of the Columbine Massacre and this slant, you can still buy it, and the plant raised tens of thousands of dollars that helped create that garden in Memorial down in Littleton, Colorado for the victims there. So it's called Remembrance. It is a form of our native that's particularly dark colored. Does like it a little bit shady, a little bit wetter than uh, some of the other plants we're talking about. Now many of us think of clematis as being vines, but there's a lot of clematis that are shrubs, that are little bush forms. This is one called Mongolian Bells. It came from Mongolia, and it's a variety of colors. So all of those are Mongolian Bells. It ranges from white to blue to lavender to pink. The plant in full size will get about 15 to 18 inches tall, and it'll spread to about three feet wide. I think it looks best when you have several of them together because you do get the variety of colors. But it's a very cold hardy form. Here's the lavendery pink form growing with another plant, select plant, the uh, blue stem joint fur behind it. And you can see it's just a little bush. It's not going to get any taller than that. And as it gets older, it'll spread wider and wider. And here at Kendrick Lake Gardens in the center, there is a blue form. So they bloom in May and June. You can cut them to the ground if you want to, if they start to open up. It will come back up, all new fresh foliage for late summer, and you might even get another set of blooms. So it's a, got a very long season of interest. I like putting it in the middle in case you do want to cut it back so it's not right at the front of the border. A large perennial, this is one of the largest perennials Plant Select has promoted, is called Curly Leaf Sea Kale. It's a cramby. And this plant here is probably two and a half feet tall and three and a half feet wide. So it's very bold. But sometimes you want that plant that fills up a lot of space and it's super cold hardy, super drought tolerant, blooms for a very long time, is a great pollinator plant. Bees and moths and butterflies will come to it. And it's even edible. I've not tried it, but I understand if you wanted to use it as an edible, you could eating the newer shoots. So a very large, bold plant. And the foliage alone, the, the picture to the left, is just the foliage. Look at that. It's got such great texture. It's growing with the Santa Fe phlox on the left. And there's a close-up of the clusters of white blossoms on the right. And this is another plant. Once it gets done blooming in early summer, you can cut it down, and it'll shoot right back up with all new fresh growth. Probably won't bloom again, but you'll get that bold foliage for the late summer. In the past, we've always known as twin spurs, the diaceas as annuals. There's many, many different diaceas you can get as an annual. And not until Plant Select introduced this one did we know there was a hardy one. This one's called Coral Canyon. It needs very sharp drainage. It needs sandy, gravelly soils to really do its best. It will bloom early summer. It may bloom all summer, but it, then it picks up again at the end of summer as temperatures drop and day length is shortened. This is a picture in October. This is in full glory. It loves those cool temperatures. In October, to have color like this is just so amazing. It will get through frosts, gets about 12 to 15 inches tall, and can spread to about 18 inches wide. It's a bit of a difficult color to work with, though I will say that. Looking at this picture, take in mind that silver goes great with difficult colors. And burgundy, if you see that oregano with the burgundy leaves, it is picking up the color of the center of the blossom. So something to look for when you don't know what else to use. Look really closely at the center of the blossom and you'll find some ideas. Normally we think of foxgloves as shade loving and biennial. More and more we're starting to see very hardy, very adaptable foxgloves. This is one from Spain and it is a true perennial. It loves the sun and it's not what you would think of when you think of foxgloves. So growing in full sun, it has sort of this almost willowy foliage, but it's very dark green, very glossy, that can be evergreen up until about March. So they can look really good through winter, and then in the early spring, you would cut them down and let the new growth come up. 
This is a challenging color as well. It's kind of orange, but it's got that burgundy stripes in it, but fabulous for a hot, sunny, dry area. I wanted to show this. Growing with cactus, who knew a foxglove could grow with cactus in full sun? There's many, many purple coneflowers and coneflowers on the market now. All these hybrids that are doubles and triples and little dwarfs and great big ones. Well, Plant Select decided to promote this one called Tennessee Purple Coneflower. And the reason was, in our trials, we found out how drought tolerant it was and how cold hardy it was. And who would have known a plant from Tennessee how well it did here? So we were so surprised at the results. It comes from alkaline areas, rocky alkaline areas, in Tennessee. So in our trials it did fabulously. The picture below is at Denver Botanic Gardens. The other reason we wanted to have this in the program was to honor this is the first plant that has ever been delisted from the Federal Endangered Species list because of conservation efforts. It is now broad spread. It is growing in the wild more vigorously, much more abundantly than it was because of the Federal Endangered Species Act and we were so pleased that it did so well we wanted to honor that as well. So a very simple purple cone flower that we find to be super hardy and super adaptable. Can grow in wetter areas, can grow in drier areas. It's a little bit taller as you can see here, maybe two to three feet in a wetter area. In our dry trials, it was about 18 inches. So a big difference in, depending on conditions. A plant called red feathers kind of hit the market with a bang. We call this sort of like a purple loosestrife, only it's red, and it's a color you don't find very often in a perennial. It is not a native, but it's very adapted to our climate. 15 to 18 inches tall in full bloom. You can see it growing in with a variety of different plants. We do find it tends to be a little bit shorter lived, so what we recommend is let some of the seed heads go to seed and let it drop the seed so it'll keep coming back. And then you can cut others back and it'll rebloom. So when you have a clump of red feathers, it's nice to cut some back and leave some go so that you'll have continuous bloom and hardy plants year after year. This is called Colorado Gold Gazania, one of the first South African plants brought to the Plant Select program. Very low growing, very floriferous perennial, start blooming in March. It'll go through most of summer, may take a little break during the heat, and it'll pick up again in late summer and go into frost. So one of the longest blooming perennials in our program, about eight inches tall, each individual plant maybe 12 inches wide. They do sometimes seed depending on how the conditions are. And in the right conditions, this can be a nice thing. So here it is in the front of a border at a private garden, letting it reseed and kind of filling in and softening the front of a border. But a very long blooming hardy plant for us. Cat mints are wonderful for Colorado. They are hardy, they bloom a long time, they attract pollinators, but many of them tend to reseed and that is a problem for a lot of us where you get seedlings everywhere. A number of years ago Little Trudy was brought to Plant Select by one of our growers. This is a sterile cat mint, and it's a little dwarf one. It only gets about 12 inches tall and about 12 inches wide, and that's it. it does, it's not big and floppy. Uh, you can let it just bloom on its own. You don't have to cut it back. It'll keep blooming, but if you want to cut it back, you can cut it back when the first flush is done, and then you'll get a whole nother set of blooms, and it won't reseed for your garden. But one of the cold hardiest plants, very good for high altitudes and great for pollinators. Here it is in Ogden, Utah, used along the walkway. I think it's stunning in full bloom. I don't think I would do this because when it's not at its peak, then you have kind of lacking something, but perhaps mixed with annuals or maybe that gazania, the Colorado Gold gazania, or something else to mix in here would give you added interest throughout the season. A selection of a native plant, this is Silver Blade Evening Primrose. It was chosen for those wide silvery leaves as well as for those beautiful yellow blooms. The Evening Primroses bloom in the morning and in the evening. They do not bloom during the middle of the day. So it's great for those of us who work during the day so we have these lovely blossoms when we're home. Here it is in combination with a mullein, just a long early summer bloomer. This is one of those plants I would recommend cutting back in the middle of summer, 
Foliage tends to get a little bit ratty looking, and then you get a whole nother flush late summer. Another daisy from South Africa. This is an osteospermum. Osteospermums have always been thought of as annuals. This is one called avalanche, pure white. It is this stunning white color, blooms all day, but closes up in the morning and the evening. Very, very hardy, very vigorous. We have three osteospermums in the program. This is the best. If you were going to get one, I'd get this one. Even when it closes up in the evening and in the morning, the backs of the petals are sort of this metallic color. It's actually quite attractive. A great low growing plant, 12 to 15 inches tall, 18 inches wide, great for the front of the border where you're trying to soft, this white mixes with everything. So if you have those colors that are difficult to work with, avalanche will get along well with, with others in the garden. Here it is blooming at the same time as Colorado Gold Gazania and even a fire spinner ice plant in the lower right, one of the newest of the South African ice plants. All of those plants are native to South Africa to the high altitudes, which is a very similar climate to what we have. Penstemons, we have many, many penstemons in the program. We have many native penstemons in the West. We'll start with this one called Red Rocks. It is a hybrid of a California and a Mexican species, very adaptable to a wide range of conditions. Red Rocks is sort of that pinky red on the left growing with uh, wine cups coming up through it. The foliage is glossy, it can be evergreen until the depths of winter. Another variety very similar is called Pikes Peak Purple. These Mexicali hybrids will adapt to a wide range. So if you have wet or you have dry or you have sunny or you have a little bit shadier, these are probably the best to choose from. Another one in the Mexicali hybrids is called Shadow Mountain, and it was selected for those uh, stripes in the throat. You can see the full form on the right. They get about 15 inches tall and about 12 inches wide. The newest of the Penstemon Mexicalis is this is called Carolyn's Hope, and this is a beautiful dark pink outer petals with a lighter throat to it. Just another one of the great performing Mexicali hybrids. This plant is being used to raise funds to benefit cancer research at the University of Colorado Cancer Center. It was named in honor of one of our growers' wife. And we hope that people will want to participate in this program and help raise the funds and have this fabulous perennial in their garden as well. We have a video on the website that talks about the development of the plant and how it's benefiting the cancer program. Silver-leafed plants are fabulous for any garden. This is called Silver Sage. It looks great in bloom. It looks great out of bloom. It is almost evergreen, so you get these large, fuzzy, silvery leaves for a very long period of time. The blossoms are this pure white uh, candelabras of this white blossom in midsummer. Here it is at Kendrick Lake Gardens in Lakewood, Colorado. Look at that stature. They're two to three feet tall, big bulky plants, but down at the base you see those large silvery leaves. So when they're not in bloom, you cut them down and then you have the benefit of these beautiful large silvery leaves. Definitely a plant with a presence. More salvia. Salvias are great for pollinators, great for hummingbirds. The deer tend not to eat salvias because they have a smell and a stickiness and the deer tend not to like that. This is one called Vermilion Bluffs. This will bloom almost all summer long. It's an amazing plant, little less hardy than some of the others. I would call it at a zone five. I wouldn't push it to higher altitudes, but it does bloom for a very long time. See the hummingbird on the right? About four feet tall in bloom and maybe three feet wide. There it is with Korean feather grass. A bold red color. And then some other salvias, the salvia gregii would be a little bit on the marginal side. So if you're in a warmer climate or you have a microclimate in your garden, I would call these a 5B for a U.S. hardiness zone. On the right, we have wild thing sage. It is that vibrant purpley magenta colored uh, Mexican feather grass on the left. This will get about two feet tall and two feet wide. Blooms late summer. Most of the salvias bloom later summer. There it is, a close up. The salvias are fabulous for p attracting pollinators. And here's a related variety called Furman's Red. It's a little bit redder than the wild thing. And there's a hummingbird moth, so it draws such a wide range of pollinators. It's fabulous to have. 
Plants that attract pollinators that are perennials are wonderful for aiding your vegetable garden and making sure you've got the pollinators coming in. Another great pollinator plant is called Red Birds in a Tree. It is a New Mexico native. Uh, it's very odd looking. You can see the flowers on the right, kind of this tubular flower. It was probably developed for hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are just drawn to this plant, a late summer bloomer. Here it is, you can see it bushy. The hotter and drier, the better, the more compact this plant is. Thinking of New Mexico, it's actually from a higher altitude in New Mexico. This one is a very cold hardy plant, probably a zone 3B or 4. Finding it grows well in Vail, uh, as well as Grand Junction. And ending with a sweet little violet. This is a zone 3 little purple violet called Corsican violet. Super cold hardy loves the higher altitudes, so down low where it gets hot, maybe it doesn't bloom as well, but the mountain people, this is a fabulous plant for the mountains, a low growing, very hardy, very durable viola, growing with a, a yellow thyme, beautiful combination with the purple and yellow, only about six inches tall and eight inches wide. And a nice close up of those. And if you want to learn more, you want to adapt some plant lists for your own garden, come to plantselect.org and you will find in the plant search area, you can create your own customized plant list. Select the benefits you're looking for and it'll give you a list of what would be some good choices. You can also download free designs, Xeriscape designs. Take these, make them your own. You can adapt a plant list to fit your situation or copy it directly. One of the best things I think on this website is this new booklet. Uh, go to Publications, Guide to Plants, and you can flip through this book that shows all the plants in the Plant Select program.